Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022. And I've got a photo that I was editing and I was playing around with it. And I got to a certain point and I was like, what do I need to do to this photo? I got to do something because this photo is not what I want this photo to be. And then I realized there's a tool, I'll call it a secret weapon, although it's not a secret, but there's a secret weapon that gives you so much power and control and gives you the ability to really target and localize adjustments so well. And I don't really ever use it that much. And unfortunately, I don't talk about it that much either. And I'm, uh, that's a miss on my part. I wanted to show you how I use that tool to make this photo really come to life. Here's my base photo. It started like that. And I clicked on AI Auto over here and then made a couple of further refinements, but started like that. And I got to this point and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do what I normally do, which is go into effects. And here I wanted to pop a little bit of color. And so I went into color balance and in the highlights, I pulled up the amount to about 45. That gave me a little bit of warmth in the highlights. There it is before. And there it is now. And then I thought, okay, well, what else do I want to do? I like that. I need to pop it a little bit more. I'm going to use dynamic contrast. One of my favorite filters. I use it all the time. So I just clicked on that and I just left it the default settings across the entire photo. It does a great job of really popping an image. So there it is before and there it is now. And this is where I got to the point and I thought, what can I do? Like, what is something that I could do to really target certain areas? Because I was looking at the photo and I was like, kind of thinking, all right, I like the warmth that I added to the highlights, but I kind of want to warm up the whole photo. And I also want to come in and target some things specifically to the top of the photo and the bottom of the photo. And so that's when I realized, I was like, there is a secret weapon, not so secret, but this secret, amazingly powerful control sort of tool in on one, and that's local adjustments. Like I said, I don't talk about them enough, I don't use them enough, but what I want to do in this video is show you how I use them to really get an impactful image here. So the first thing I did is just do a local adjustment and I inverted it so it applies across the entire photo. And what I did is after resetting that exposure back to zero, I just came in here and I warmed up the entire photo, I gave it a temperature of like six. So just across the entire photo which is something I like about local adjustments. You're basically replicating the develop tab over here and able to come in and use it again and again. You can either target things, which I'll do in a second, or in this case, I just applied it globally. So it's just further warming across the entire image. But then I came in and said, well, I need another one of these. And what I wanna do is come in with a gradient mask. I'm gonna do this linear bottom and let me hit reset on exposure. And I wanna just tilt this a little bit so it kind of follows that wall. So maybe something about like that. And I'm focused on the top of the image as you can see in the masking window here. And what I wanna do is basically bump the exposure a little bit. It's gonna give it a little bit of contrast as well. I like my contrast and I'm gonna pull down the highlights a little bit. Gonna slightly lift the midtones as well and slightly lift the shadows. So you can already see that quite an impact has happened in the top of the photo. There it is before and there it is after. And I'm not done, I'm gonna do a little bit more here. Slight bump in temperature and also a slight bump in tint. And last thing I'm gonna do here is just give it a kick of vibrance, which I love to do. And so if you look at the top of the photo, it's really come to life. I mean, that's quite a difference. There it is before I've done any of these adjustments and there it is now. Now, one of the cool things about it is, hey, if you like that, but it's a little too much, of course you had this opacity adjustment. I'm not gonna use it, but you can basically dial back the amount of everything that you just did. So you can kind of get a look that you like, and then if you wanna further refine it, you can just come in and dial that back a little bit. I'm gonna leave it at 100 because I do like it, but I'm not finished. What I need to do is go get another adjustment and in fact, I first need to go back into the one I just had and copy that mask. So I'm gonna copy the mask. Now I'm gonna add a new adjustment. Click on here, paste the mask and invert it. Close the masking menu, reset that to zero. So I basically now got a mask for the bottom of the photo, right? I basically copied the last one, pasted it here, inverted it. So my mask is in place. I'm ready to have a play with the bottom of the photo. And the first thing I wanna do, of course, is brighten it because it's just too dark. So about a 0.5 there. Once again, a little contrast. Um, I like the darkness in the trees, so I don't wanna totally brighten that. I wanna keep some contrast, even though I'm brightening the overall uh, look in that lower part of the photo. 
put on the highlights a little bit. I'm going to lift the midtone slightly, but slightly pull back the shadows. It's basically just a delicate dance where I'm playing with the light. That's really what it comes down to. Temperature here is going to actually go slightly cooler. I like that blue and that reflected water. I think that looks really nice, but the tint is going to go up a little bit, and my vibrance is going to go up as well. Notice I didn't do nearly as much as I did in the sky, and that was by design. I feel like the reflection should be a little bit darker. Now that I look at it, I think the top section is probably a little bit too bright. Like I said, you just go back in here and you can dial back adjustments if you need to. So close the masking. I can either pull back the exposure slightly or I can pull back the overall opacity. I think I'm going to pull back the opacity a little bit and maybe slightly reduce the exposure. I think that's a little bit tamer. So let me go back to this bottom adjustment. There's the before and there's the after. And so that's how I'm using these local adjustments to really get better control because let me show you what the photo looked like beforehand. That's what my photo looked like after doing everything I wanted to do and develop as well as adding two adjustments in the effects tab, which were color balance and dynamic contrast. I had a nice base photo, but it was lacking umph. It was lacking that warmth. I wanted to play up the contrast in the different areas slightly different. I wanted to make adjustments to the exposure and the light values in each of those sections at different levels. That's where the power of local adjustments comes in. So added an overall warmth. So that's a global adjustment, not local. Added an adjustment for the top that allowed me to take the photo really warm it up and brighten it as you can see, and then added a local adjustment for the bottom, which took me to there. So that's the power and the control of the secret weapon local adjustments in on one. Again, I'm using air quotes. It's obviously not a secret weapon, and I'm sure many of you use local adjustments all the time. For whatever reason, I haven't been doing that and I haven't been showing it in videos, and I wanna make sure that I'm pointing out that it's an incredibly powerful and useful component of on one, and it's one that I'm trying to remember to work into my workflow more often simply because you can do a lot. One more time without local adjustments, I had that. And while I could do things in effects to more accurately target certain areas, I would have to use various tools and effects with masks to get the same result that I can do with a single mask in local adjustments simply because it has light, it has color, it has lots of different tools here. So one more time, local adjustment overall to warm it up, local adjustment in the sky, and local adjustment in the reflection gives me a much better overall result. There's my total before, there's my total after. That's how it went in this one, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about local adjustments and using them to target specific areas in your photos. Thanks for watching, I do appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. If there are certain things about On One you would like to see, leave me a comment down below, and don't forget a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. I'll be back soon. You guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching, and adios.